Hey there, we're going to do a quick video today which is going to cover creating a Rails application which is then going to use Git version control and we're going to synchronize our local repository with a remote repository on GitHub. And so I've got a new Rails application which is building uh, behind the scenes right now and while that is happening I'm going to go over to my browser and it all begins if we want to synchronize uh, a local repository to a remote. This remote can be on something like GitHub, it could be up on something like GitLab or Bitbucket. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it is, the, uh, the sort of overall pattern of what I'm going to do is going to be very similar. But we need to create the, the remote repository uh, via the web here. So I'm, I'm logged into my GitHub account. I have a separate account specifically for my repositories that have to do with my work at the college. And then up at the top here, I'm going to click this button, and one of them is for new repository. And that's what I'm going to click. I'm going to specify that the owner is going to be my Stung IRRC account. And then I'm just going to call this uh, remote source control demo. So I'm hooking up a local Rails Git repo with a Git hub remote. We're going to keep this public and one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to initialize this repository with anything in it because we're going to almost immediately connect it to a local repository and then we're going to pull or push all of our local files that we commit over into this remote repository. So we don't actually want to start with anything in this remote repository because then we might deal with some, well then we would deal with some merge conflicts because there would be uh, data in this repo that would not match the, the local repository. So I'm not going to click this button, I'm not going to add anything else. I'm just going to create repository. I'm now at the uh, URL for this new repository. So this is where it, what URL you would visit when you uh, want to see this repo up on GitHub. I could add teams and collaborators at this point. Uh, down below here, there are some instructions for what we would need to do to hook this up to a local repository. Uh, there's one for if you need to create a whole new repository from the command line or if you need to push an existing repository from the command line. This is the one we're going to be doing specifically because when you start up a Rails project, it by default, one of the conventions of Rails by default is that the project is going to be already initialized as a Git repository. It will already have that hidden .git folder. We'll just have to make an initial uh, commit into that repository and then we can run these two lines of code that are provided. So we can go over here and see how things are going. So we're, we're almost at the point where the uh, project is up and ready. We're just at the, uh, the yarn install step. So the other thing I'm going to talk about here is that we have a choice to make which is the difference between uh, making this, what we're doing is we're adding a remote. So you can see this command here, git remote add and we're adding a remote and we're giving it a name and the, the standard name for your remote is origin. So this is, this is what is our GitHub repo is going to be known as. It's going to be known as origin. But that, you know, you could put a different name there. The name itself is not important. So we're adding a remote, we're giving it a name, and then we're linking it up to either an HTTPS URL or if I click this button up top here, an SSH with a username and a path. Now the difference between the two is if you make an HTTPS remote, when you push to it, you're going to be asked for your GitHub username and password. If you do SSH, well then you will have needed to set up a public private key for authentication. And so I'm not going to cover that in uh, this particular video, but you can learn more of that if you go to 
uh, your settings, and then specifically you go to the section for SSH and GPG keys. This is where you add keys and it, you'll find a link there which will provide you with some steps for how to actually go about creating a public-private key on your local machine. And this will be different depending on if you're creating it in Windows or if you're creating it in uh, Linux or the WSL. Um, and so I'm not going to cover that, but if you, if you want to go passwordless, like if you don't want to have to always enter your username and password, then it would be better to, to put in some time and to set up a public-private key. You basically keep your private key private. It stays on your own machine. The public key, you upload that to GitHub and you, you flag it as like, this is my public key. And then when you set up a remote that is an SSH remote, that those public private keys will be used behind the scenes to authenticate you and you won't have to provide a username and password. Um, for simplicity's sake though, you could just go with HTTPS. I've already set up my public private key so I can use SSH. Over here, our Rails project is done. I can navigate to it. I had originally built it just by saying new Rails and then the the name of the project. So I'm going to just navigate to that folder. And then I'm going to open that folder here, which is in my mount C uh, full stack. And it's inside of the rails and then it's called remote source control. Okay, we're not actually going to add anything to this Rails uh, app. We're not going to um, do anything really with it at all. The, the whole point here is just to set up GitHub. If we look, there is the version control section or source control section of VS Code. It picks up all the changes. So I could commit, I could make my first commit in one of two ways. I could at the command line do a git add dot to add everything and then do a git commit minus M and call it like the initial commit. And then the other way of going about this would be to just do it from within VS Code. I could just say initial commit. At this point, I could sort of cherry pick which files that I want to commit by clicking this plus button. I want them all. So I'm going to hit Control, Enter, and VS Code will just ask me, would you like to automatically stage, meaning add, all these changes and then commit them directly? And I'll say yes. So I've made my first commit. If I do a git log, can see it in there. Uh, I'm on my master branch. I, I've set my terminal up that it displays that. You could also check that out by saying git branch and it'll tell you that you're on your master branch. The reason we want to know that is when you are pushing to a remote, you need to know which branch you want to push. And currently we only have one branch and it's called master. Now I want to add this remote. So I'm going to grab this whole line here. I'm going to copy and paste it in. Again, you're probably going to go with the option of using HTTPS, uh, but you could use the SSH option if you set up your public-private keys and add that. If you ever don't know if your uh, repo has a remote attached to it or not, you can always type git minus v for verbose, and it'll tell you. And here it shows that we have a remote called origin that's set up for both fetching and pushing. And there it is. And now all I need to do is git push origin master. And I can add an extra flag to that so that it will always remember the name of the remote and the name of the branch. So if I put a minus u on there, then next time I just need to hit git push and it will use the previous remote and the previous branch for me. So this is asking git to push master branch up to origin, which is this GitHub that we have defined. I'm going to hit enter there. It asks me for the passphrase for my private key. I type that in. If you used HTTPS, that's the point at which you, you would be asked for your GitHub username and password. Looks like everything was successful. Branch master set up to track remote master from origin. If we go back over here and reload this page. There we are. One commit, it's the initial commit. There's my entire Rails project. And down below, we're displaying the, uh, the default readme file that is in the repo. 
So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Uh, after this point, you can continue committing. You can commit uh, as many times as you want without having to push it up. So one thing to know is that when you do a new commit, that will not be immediately recognized remotely. So you can commit locally as many times as you want, and then the next time you want all of those commits, one or more of them, to be pushed up to your remote, you just have to hit or type in git push, and it will push those remotely. And that way you could do a whole bunch of work, even not connected to the internet, continuing to commit locally, and then when you're ready, you can push up a whole series of commits. And that's sort of the idea of this, this distributed version control that Git allows us to do. All right, thank you very much for listening to me talk today about hooking up a Rails repository with a GitHub remote.